Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf Your One Noli, and today we're gonna be talking about day two and three of E3. Since I missed the video for yesterday, because uh, like I told you guys inside of the community tab, my motherboard arrived, but it, it doesn't work. It, it's a faulty motherboard that the guy sent me, and it had a whole bunch of dust and stuff on it. So I'm pretty sure it's shorted out and shit like that. So it won't work. So I gotta go get a refund on that. But yeah, this E3 was meh. It wasn't like the best E3 in the world, but I could definitely say they got some pretty cool games that interested me. Um, Nintendo, not so much interested me. Except for the new Zelda that's in development. Now that, that has me quite interested. I need to play Breath of the Wild before I even go on to that game though. Because that actually looks pretty interesting. But the games that interested me for Bethesda... Jesus Christ. I mean, for um, Ubisoft and Square Enix. Mostly, Ubisoft has me interested for a lot of their games. One of them is Midnight Ghost Hunt. Which was actually pretty interesting. Of a concept of, you know, prompts versus hunters. But the prompts get to fight back. And they become stronger if you... Leave them alive too long. Oh, hiccups. If you leave them alive too long, that actually sounds interesting. I want to play that. Like, let me have that game. <laughs> because if I'm a prop man, you just basically pretty much all prop hunt games have been just like the props need to hide, die. Um, actually, no, Prey. Prey had a prop hunt game. To where the props could fight back too. And. Theirs were pretty much. I'm pretty sure insta kill and stuff like that. It was basically just survive. As for this game. You could just fight back by throwing props. At the hunters and stuff like that. And if the hunters don't kill you by midnight. Or when that like grandfather clock thing goes off. The hunt. The like props get like way stronger and pretty much win they said 90% of the time. That the hunters have to pretty much survive past that clock until their van arrives to like evac them. That actually sounds really interesting and I want to try it out. Yeah, it's gonna be frustrating if you don't get them all and just that one ghost comes back and just fucks up your whole victory, your whole team. <laughs> There's another one called Moons Moons of Madness, which we didn't see too much of, but it's a horror game, I think, and I want to see more of that. Another one is Revenant, which actually looks pretty interesting. The whole co-op, kind of like horror-ish, kind of third-person shooter type thing. It, it, it looked pretty cool. It reminded me of um, The Hunt before it changed into like, somewhat of a battle royale. I wish it would have stayed, you know, pretty much instant dungeons and, you know, hunting down creatures together as a co-op and not just a battle royale. I'm kind of sad that they, had, that they did change their idea of it. Because it was going to be like a four-person co-op game where you go in and hunt like legendary creatures and stuff like that, like spiders and stuff. And they decided to make it a battle royale instead with the same premise of it. So, yeah. Eh. Not a huge fan of it. Shamu 3. I can't wait because I played the other Shamus. I never finished them though, so I need to get on Steam, play them, finish them, then move on to 3 because it's been with me since I had a Dreamcast, man. Dreamcast was like really fun for me, especially Fur Fighters. That, that game was fucking ridiculously fun. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to Shamu 3. It looks like it's going to be pretty much the same. But, just the graphics look so much better. And everybody was talking about the forklift job. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to keep that in. There's no way they're taking it out with how much people actually enjoy that crap. <laughs> I wouldn't even lie, dude. Driving that thing was fun as fuck. But me, I never really liked, let, like, the little small parts of Shamu get to me, especially when Dreamcast, because back then you were never really thinking about, like, the small things of, oh, well, all this game is doing is just waiting, doing this, doing that, 
you know, I still am that way because I really don't care. I'm just having fun with it. As long as I'm having fun, you know, just chilling, trying to figure out the game and stuff, you know. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm just having fun. Like, I don't really look into the little bits and pieces of it like everybody else. I'm just sitting here like, hey, is this game fun for me to play? I don't really care if it's fun for you. Is it fun for me, you know? <laughs> Uh, Watch Dogs Legion is the most hyped game I'm looking forward to because I enjoy the Watch Dogs games. One was my least favorite, though, you know. But two, two is alright so far. I actually like two. But Legion sounds fucking amazing. But I'm kind of sad it's a permadeath system because if you get attached to that one character and they die, that's pretty much it, man. You're sad for the rest of the day. You're crying in your sleep. It's over. You lost that character, my guy. <laughs> There's no going back, man. It's over. Uh, man, Watch Dogs Legion just looks so fucking good for me. I can't wait. And next one was Tom Clancy um, Breakpoint, which I'm actually looking forward to to play with, like, friends. I just want to see, like, are the Wolves actual other players or if it's just normal NPCs, like if it's actual players that can actually queue up as the wolves too, that would be interesting. Because they're talking about like the go like you guys used to be ghosts and stuff like that. You'd be fighting your comrades and stuff like that. That that gotta be thinking a little bit more into it and thinking maybe players can queue up as wolves that, you know, invade your games now and then. That'd actually make it a lot harder and a lot more you know, cool, especially if you're, like, rolling with your squad, and it's just, like, one wolf just queues up and just destroys your whole team, that, that'd be pretty interesting of a concept, but I doubt it's gonna happen, but also, um, what was it, Luigi's Mansion 3 kind of reminded me, like, the really, really old Scooby-Doo game, I'm trying to figure out what it was, hold up, because the mechanics of capturing the ghost definitely reminded me of it. And this Scooby-Doo game was on the original Xbox. Hold on, let me see. Because, dude, that's literally the vibes I got from just watching it. Book. Uh, no, I don't think that's it. Um, so, wow, okay, I don't even think it's right here. Hold on. Xbox. Let's put that in. Maybe that'll pop up. No, it still doesn't pop up. Damn it, what was this game, man? It was probably like a grimoire or something. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will probably remember it. It it was basically Shaggy and Scooby teaming up together, aiming a book at ghosts and dragging people into, well, dragging like new ghosts into like the book, and every character, every like ghost they learned, it became easier to catch the more times they catched it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will probably remember what I'm talking about. God damn it, dude. Come on. It has to be on here. Like, it's literally original Xbox. Nothing else. Scooby-Doo Unmasked. Was that it? I think it was Scooby-Doo Unmasked. Yeah. it was, I think it was Scooby-Doo Unmasked. Or either that was uh, Mystery Mayhem. It was one of those. That's for sure. Because just the whole book concept, you had, like, quick time events, and you're, like, trying to drag the ghosts into the book by, you know, zapping some of their strength and, like, and stuff like that. And that's instantly what I thought about the game. I was just like, wait, hold on, are they taking this mechanic for Scooby-Doo? But then again, you guys gotta realize that I've never really played a Luigi Mansion game. And I kind of want to try out this Luigi 3 this Luigi, uh, Haunted Mansion 3, or whatever the hell it was called, 
I, I do definitely want to try it out. It looks interesting. The other thing that looked pretty interesting was the Animal Crossing game, the new one, because I've never played Animal Crossing before. So that's also another thing I'm going to try out whenever my PC is fixed, which I'm going to have to order the part once again. So like, basically PC fixing has been pushed back a lot further. It's funny because that was the right part I needed, but the guy sent me like one that was so dusty, dude. Like you don't get how dusty this thing was. I had to go out and buy a can of air with hollow just to freaking blow this fucking PC out. And it still didn't work. So yeah, it feels bad, mate. <laughs> Wasted a whole bunch of money for nothing. Now I better get it back. That's all I know. But yeah, the guy replied and said he he will definitely give me a refund once I uh, send it back. So yeah. Yep. That's life. But yeah, this whole E3 was like, meh. They got a they got me interested on in a few games, but not too much. It seemed like they were just doing remakes of games they have already done before. You know, like just sequels. You know, nothing like really new. Mostly everything in this E3 was just continuing off uh, like other games that pretty much the community enjoyed. But, you know, I want to see some, you know, newer games. So I'm hoping next year, you know, we get something a lot better. I mean... Sony didn't show up this year, so, yeah. Pro I was thinking probably because it was just that they had exclusives, and Xbox wanted to, like, show off. Well, since they're partnering up, they're kind of partnering up against, like, Google and stuff like that, since Google's trying to make their own shit now. I think they're trying to make, you know, more, less exclusive console games. You know, because that's, that's kind of what I like, you know, being able to put your games on any platform, you know, that is fucking fantastic. The less exclusives in the world, the better, man. That's for sure. Now somebody tell Epic that. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one, guys. That's all I wanted to talk about for this E3. Hope you guys have an amazing E3 for those of you guys who are actually there. And, you know, tell me a little bit about those games, you know. Tell me what you play. But overall, I want to hear what you guys are honestly looking forward to through, through this whole E3 now that, it's, now that all the conferences are pretty much over. What are you guys mostly looking forward to? I want to know. Give me the list of the games that you guys are wanting to buy right now. I'm honestly looking forward to Pokemon Sword and Shield too, But that's a little bit far, further into the future this year. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I can wait. That's it then. Peace out.